Spencer is here for InsideTrackNews.com. I'm hanging out with the 2015 Sovel Speedway Track Champion Primetime Josh Stoddy. You've only been a champion for like, for like two weeks now. Have you gotten used to hearing people introduce you, introduce you that way? Uh, no, not not really, but the amount of support, like even today we showed up at Delaware and other drivers that we're racing against coming over and congratulating you and it just really makes you realize how big of a deal it is. Uh, I don't think it's sunk in just yet. I think when we're at the banquet and we're getting the championship board in front of all the guys you beat, I think it'll sink in a little more then. So, I mean, with you it's so cool because... The guys that you beat are the same ones that you've been racing against all along. Like yeah. these are the guys that you started racing against. That's that's what's cool about Sobels. It's the same roster every year, right? Yeah. You know, the, the, the Tommy Gibbons and the Marvin Freibergers and the Jason Parkers, and this year it was Tim Ellis and a lot of really tough veterans. I mean, is it that much more gratifying knowing that these are the guys that were you, you were getting your ass handed to you a couple of years ago? Well, now you're beating them to win a championship. Yeah, and the the biggest thing is like there's a ton of experience. The car count isn't that great, but we. For the drivers it's that quality. are the drivers quality. Over there, there's a lot of quality drivers like Junior Farley and Tim Ellis and guys like that. And I mean, Jason Parker's obviously no slouch. He's won championships there. And uh, to go and beat those guys, it's it's I don't, I'm lost for words to say what it actually means. The biggest thing uh, in my career is I wanted to win a championship uh, where I started racing late model. So to be able to do it at such a young age uh, and get it out of the way, it just kind of like the weights off your shoulders now but you're you're only 23 okay. does that make you the are you the youngest solvable speedway late model champion in history uh i think so i was i when i did an interview with uh, joe chisholm there on race time radio the following monday i posed a question to him and uh he went through a bunch of files and stuff like that and he was searching and he couldn't find anyone younger than me he's almost certain that i'm the youngest to win a championship up there in the late model so um, it'd be nice to know for sure, but uh, it, yeah, that'd be a pretty unreal feeling. Now, let's go back a year and a half when you were really struggling, and it was... On the streets of Chesley. Uh, <laughs> at the at, time, yeah. at the streets of Chesley, <laughs> yeah, the mean streets of Chesley. Yeah. At the time, I mean, you were you were calling it the, the, the biggest rut in your career. Like, you, you guys couldn't get the car figured out, and no matter what you did, it seemed like the harder you worked, the, the worse the car was. And, and, and nothing made sense, and then the car caught fire literally yep. <laughs> and from there it got better and it, and it rolled into this huge season that you had this year but when you're in the middle of that slump last year the car's not working the way you wanted to you know just going out and, and getting a top 10 some nights is, is oh, seeming yeah. impossible D did you ever dream when you were in that slump that you'd be here where you where you are right now talking to me about winning a championship uh, the biggest like the biggest thing with us is uh just keep working obviously it, it is discouraging i mean Every race car driver out there knows the amount of uh, time and commitment and money that you're throwing at the racing, and uh, to not have it showing results and it's the most discouraging thing in the life because that is your hobby, that's your passion, and that's your lifestyle, and you're giving it everything you got week in and week out. Um, and there, are, unfortunately, there are times where you're not finishing three or four races in a row, or you finally get a good run going, and you like us this year we. Uh, came from the back on the one invitational up at Sauble and uh, just about to take the lead and we blow up so I mean uh, it kind of sucked but you just I don't know you just kind of think about here and now and just keep on keeping on and hoping that you get past it. Now the championship you won this year it wasn't like you fluked into one the last night you know you took the lead the first week of July which is for Sauble that's, that's fairly early in the Sauble schedule and you, and you held on to it all year long now yeah. That gave you a chance to be the hunted. You know, you, you've been the hunter for a long time, but now you you had experience being the dude at the front of the heap, the front of the pack that, that everyone was chasing. What was that like? Uh, the biggest thing that happened this year, it was kind of your goals just completely change. Uh, when we reclipped this car at Brian Max this year, all we wanted to do was go out and win races. And uh, Junior Farley and Jason Parker were the top two guys there one night, and they got tangled up in a wreck. And I knew that we were uh, the new points leader that night. So uh, it, it kind of changed my driving style all summer. I was, I was a little more conservative when, as opposed to passing for that other position. It was like, okay, this is a good points night. I'll settle for third when I could have really passed for second. But I just kind of, I just wanted to make sure I didn't spin anyone out or get spun out and start at the back and just kind of have a good points night. So uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. It was it, it was hard being the points leader. It's it's you got to bring your A game every week. Like you can't be a slouch. And there were nights that we had bad nights, and uh, we blew up that uh, one invitational. And we missed a points night, and I had Tim Schreinert and his whole crew say, you know, we want to keep you in this. We want to see a new face uh, win the championship, and uh, they're Ford guys, and we're Ford guys, and we just kind of stuck together, and they let me borrow their car, and uh, we were running third. We finished sixth, but, I mean, uh, yeah, there was there were some nights where we were, uh, we had a five-point lead, but uh, going into the feature, we only had a one-point lead, and then there was a night when I lost the points lead in the heat, I was sitting second, and then after the feature, I had a two-point lead, just where I finished. So it was, it wasn't handed to us by any means. We only won it by two points, and it came down to the last race. Was that the moment where Shinar came over and offered you the car? Was that the turning point of your season? Um, I mean, was that the most memorable moment? That was, that was definitely the most memorable moment. Uh, I can't, like, I'm lost for words for those guys. I mean, they gave us the trailer, they gave us their tools, they gave us the car, they let me test with it. Um, and all they wanted to do was keep us in it and at least have a chance at it and to be able to say that it paid off and we're the championship. I mean, we couldn't have done it without them. Like, uh, so my hat goes off to those guys. I can't thank them enough. I mean, they're a huge part of this championship, just like uh, my own team. So, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a, time in my career that I'm going to remember the rest of my life um, the turning point in the championship the thing that won me the championship was the second last night I, I said to the guys we were in the shop that week and I said you know let's stop this points race and let's go tonight let's have fun and let's try and win this friggin race well that's what we did we had we had uh, we were one point shy of a perfect night we won the heat we came from the back finished second by just half a car length and then ended up winning the feature and we started seventh in the feature so i mean that was the that was the championship uh win right there to me was the second last night you spent your entire adult life chasing this championship it's it's everything you've wanted to do it's yeah. all the energy you've had all the resources has, has gone into this so now that you have it how do you stay motivated moving forward uh the, i want to win an apc race i mean that's that's a given. Uh, EPC championship, that'd be nice. I mean, we're sitting six in points right now. Uh, we have no we have nothing to be disappointed about at all this year. We uh, we have two cars and we worked our asses off. I mean, and we got a championship. And if we can finish in the top ten in points this first year with this pro late, I mean, I've never raced Delaware until this year. I never raced Flamborough until this year. I only raced Peterborough once. And I mean, here we are, six in points in this traveling series where I have no experience in any of these tracks. Um, so going on, I mean, yeah, you look at the APC series and the champions and big race winners here. I mean, I want to go and beat these guys. So is that where you're headed now? Is, is it going to be less weekly Saturday night stuff and and more or as much touring across the province with the with the APC tour? Um, we haven't talked yet. I mean, we got to keep it fun for our guys, right? If they want to go back and race full time at the beach, we're probably going to do that. I, I don't see why not. Uh, it just depends on supports and funds, right? I mean, it's not it's not easy doing it yourself. So, and we've had a lot of great support this year. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna do APC full time next year. I mean, that's that's a given. Um, whether we go back and defend the championship at the beach or just do invitationals next year with that car, we we've yet to talk about that. So we're just trying to get through this year and uh, try and go out tomorrow and win this race. I want to talk about the the photo of Jason Parker, who won the feature on the final night, yep. who happened to be the outgoing champion. Uh, he had the checkered flag in hand, yep. drove down to where you were You were sort of waiting for your turn under the flag stand, yep. and he handed the, the checkered flag to you. And in a lot of, in a lot of ways, that was, the, that was the passing of the torch. That passing, was the passing yep. of the guard. I mean, I've done a lot of interviews the last two years with Jason where he's, where he's been very open and very forthcoming about, hey, you know, I'm 40 years old now, and i got two kids yep. and a growing business, and I don't know how much longer I can do this. So for him to pass it down to 23-year-old Josh Stoddy, I mean, that, that had to have been a special moment for both of you guys. Yeah, I think uh, it's there was so much going on that night to really pinpoint uh, the feelings that were happening there, but it, it's almost like I gained one of the guys that saw, well, that was one of the top guys there for a long time. It's almost like I just gained his respect by beating him. He, 
Uh, I mean, even after the race, we had a hundred dollar bet on it. Yes, I you did. <laughs> I had so much on my mind, he completely forgot about that. And I uh, walk up to his trailer, and he said, "Well, he said you beat me." And he pulled out the hundred dollars. He hands me the hundred dollars, and so I don't know. Yeah, it did mean a lot to me. That was uh, that that was huge, and that was very good of him. Uh, yeah, I, I think it was a respect thing. I mean, uh, Jason and I were camping on this APC tour, and uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of drinks uh, this summer and talked about racing and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, that that did that hit home with me. Jason's another guy that's that's, that's unsure of his plans next year. Uh, if Sauble Speedway doesn't have Josh Dotty and it doesn't have Jason Parker. As a guy that supported Sobel for a long time, do you do you worry about his future if, if two of its stars are leaving on a full-time basis? I do worry about it. I mean, that's that's an awesome facility. I mean, that that track is a lot of fun to race on. I mean, look at it, the Beat the Heat weekend. The campers that were in there, the people that, you know, the car counts are a little down, which is a shame. There are a lot of cars uh, sitting at home right now. And, I mean, we just don't have... Up at the beach, we just don't have it like uh, Sunset or Delaware has, where they're pulling from the cities. And uh, I mean, even support-wise for the other guys, I mean, it's hard to get sponsors up our way. Um, but uh, that's something we gotta look at. I mean, that it's 30 minutes down the road, and if we can support it, we're gonna. Um, but it depends on what my guys want to do and uh, what big races come on. I mean, there's a lot that can factor in. What does uh, maybe what does Sunset have to offer us? Maybe we, you know, we kind of hit something on the bucket list. Maybe we try that route. We don't know yet. So uh, I, the biggest thing would be going to the drivers' meetings, seeing what races are coming up, uh, talking to the crew guys, seeing what they want to do, talking to sponsors. Obviously, if they want, if you get a, the funding's there, then we got to do that. Well, you, you speak about Sunset. You came down to Sunset on opening night three weeks before Sobble Speedway even opened, yep. or a week before Sobble Speedway even opened, and, and you came out and, and you beat some of the some of the top-ranked teams in the province. When when you did that, was that the moment that you finally realized that, that you guys had arrived as legitimate contenders? Because I think you've been coming down to Sunset for a long time. I'm not sure if you ever really believed that you were going to beat some of these guys, because you seemed awfully surprised when you climbed out of the car in victory lane, but when it all sank in, was that the moment where you knew, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to, to go and, and tussle with the very best guys out here. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got, we had, uh, just everything fell into place this year. We had the support, we had Brian Mack, uh, we reclipped the car. Uh, the car was completely different, and uh, to unload and win on opening night at another track, I mean, that's huge. I mean, let alone your own track, to unload and win. Um, but, I mean, there's no, there's no slouch. In that sunset, uh, that's still the biggest win of my career. I mean, yeah, the championship at Solvo, that's big, but that win, I mean, I, I beat some of the best guys in Ontario. That that track has guys that could, 15 to 20 guys that could win on it any given night. And uh, to unload, and it, it kind of just kind of dropped the weight on our shoulders. It just was, it was like, you know what, this is going to be a fun year. Let's go out and win some races. We didn't even... To be completely honest, never even thought championship contention. We just wanted to win races. That's all we wanted to do. And um, we won three of them this year with that car. And uh, yeah, it just it's an unbelievable year. I just I can't thank uh, the people that made it happen for sure. I mean, I've just lost for words. I'm so thankful for everything, every opportunity my parents have given me. I mean, it uh, it's a lot of hard work, but to be able to say that you beat the best of the best. Not only the opening night at Sunset and the championship at Salvo. I mean, uh, we've we've had an awesome year. I want to talk about your dad. I want to talk about Dwayne Stoddy. I mean, he was uh, he's been at Salvo most of his life. Yeah. You know, either as a competitor, or a fan, or a sponsor, or a team owner. Uh, Salvo's been a huge part of his life, and I and I know how badly he wanted to see his son succeed there. I mean, it's it's not about being the best late model team in the province first things first he wanted to be the best late model team at Sabo. I know what oh, that yeah. meant to him the first time you and I ever spoke you happened to be in Barry we went out we went out for dinner and I you know we got into the you know tell me about how you got started in racing you said that you'd heard all about your dad's exploits and you oh, wanted yeah. to be like your dad you wanted to win a championship like your dad so the fact that you were finally able to bring him that title and say look you know we're we're the best team on the Sabo roster what was that like um 
it was uh, it was really emotional. I, mean, I don't know if a lot of people have seen it, but two laps to go, and uh, we finally took the white flag, and we knew we had it. it was, uh, I was a wreck in the car. I mean, I did it for him. I uh, I never wanted anything so bad in my life. I wanted. To, he he always said to me, he said, I won seven championships in those four cylinder mods back in the day, and uh, he said, you know. I ne never want to leave my champion, but he's like, whatever happens tonight, he's like, we've had an awesome year, we've won three races so far, and we've done this, and we've done that, and I just, I said, no, I want to win this so bad, like, so, yeah, it was unbelievable, uh, he stands behind me 100%, and uh, I don't think I've ever seen my old man that happy before, uh, <laughs> so we get the boogie board, the championship board, and the next day, I said, you know what, I'm going to go down, because we usually go to my grandma's house, his mom, uh, every Sunday for breakfast. So I said, you know what, I'm going to take the board down, show her, because it's pretty exciting, you know, racing's in our family. So I go unload the car, unload everything, and I, I go to get the board, and it's gone. So I'm like, okay, he's, all, he's obviously already down there. So I go down there and uh, walk into Grandma's house, and she's like, oh, were you coming to show me your trophy? I was like, yeah, I, I was, and... She's like, oh, well, your dad just left here. He's taking it for breakfast. It's his new girlfriend. <laughs> so then if, if that wasn't enough, I come home. <laughs> and uh, me and my mom walk into his room where he's doing whatever. And he's got the board tucked into her side of the bed with the blanket over it. And he says, Teresa, you better find a couch because my new girlfriend's sleeping with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, that kind of, he, he, uh, he was very proud, very happy. I mean, uh, and his support went somewhere. I mean, it. Uh, yeah, I can't thank him enough. He he sticks through me, uh, through everything. It seemed like he was always the voice of reason last year when you were going through your slump. Because I know, I mean, you're you're hard on yourself. You, oh, yeah. you you push yourself probably more than anybody else does. Uh, and when you were going through that and you were beating yourself up and you were getting frustrated, uh, what sort of advice did your dad have to say? I mean, did, did he know that a turnaround was coming? Did he know that a, eventually your team would get to where it is right now? Um, I don't really know. Like, I think he just wanted to win races. I mean, and getting hooked up with Brian McDonald was probably one of the best things that happened to us. Uh, he's like part of the family. I mean, um, yeah, there's, there's, it. I don't know, it just for us it just never seems to come easy, you know what I mean? Uh, it just seems like we struggle a lot more than you see some guys. It's like, wow, we cut a tire on nothing. And then you see a guy over there, he, he'll race, he won't have a DNF in three years or ever get. And not that you wish that upon anyone, but it just seems like the luck wasn't ever in our in our uh, spot. Yeah, we won, we won a few races, but then tech was hard on us or something stupid like that, you know what I mean? So uh, this year the pieces I don't know we just I got I got great support and everything just kind of fell in and we just kind of took it one event at a time. I mean I did I did have on my uh, list about three or four invitationals I wanted to race at sunset, but uh, we played more conservative and uh, we said you know let's go after this championship let's go get it. So that's we kind of stuck to our guns and we took it one night at a time, one race at a time and. Uh, uh, thankfully, uh, we got it. Well, now that you have the championship out of the way, I guess that offers you more liberties to, to not be so conservative and, and get to go chase some, some big race wins. So what's one flagship event, big race win, that you want to add before you do anything else? Oh, I think the Velocity, for sure. The Velocity is it's a fun weekend. There's uh, camping and uh, concerts, and it kind of gets, gets the team in an atmosphere where it's not all about racing, but... Uh, you can camp and you can have a little bit of fun and have some drinks and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that'd be that'd be a fun weekend. I got a lot of people that are following me track to track now. So if there was any event that I wanted to win right now, uh, probably Velocity be the next one on my bucket list. Well, the last Solo Speedway driver to do so was the man you beat for the championship, right. other than Jason Parker. So yeah. maybe a little bit of a connection there. That's right. Yeah. Well, she's a week away and. Uh, we're, we're working on it. We've been working and ever since the day after the championship. We had the car unloaded and started working on it for Velocity. Well, I know that none of this happens. You know, you, you mentioned Brian Mack, you mentioned your guys and your dad, but it's it's the sponsors and the marketing partners that stand behind you, and they were with you when you were losing, they were with you when you were struggling, and oh, yeah. now they're with you when you're when you're on top yeah. and you're a champion. So, so go ahead and, and show a little bit of love to, to the people that have stuck with you to get you where you are. 
Well, I gotta thank uh, my uncle, Upper Canada Title. Uh, he supports me 100%. And uh, Nico Insurance came on board this year. Now, I'm gonna mention some guys on my Pro Late too because it's kind of a whole package deal. And uh, some of the sponsors on the Pro Late are following me with my Limited Late, even if they don't sponsor the car. So I gotta thank Barkley Wholesale, Ed Chesley, and uh, Tire Master, James Cable Fuels, APC Auto Parts Centers out of Chesley and Hanover, MEI Paving, uh, Ken's Truck Painting, uh, Flow Enterprises out of Pennsylvania. Um, just everyone, my family, my sisters, my girlfriend, she does, she drops everything that she's doing for me. I mean, she follows me faithfully track to track and uh, she kind of gets the short end of the stick with everything, but uh, she stands by my side and uh, yeah. I just, my parents, everyone, my crew guys, everyone. There you have folks. You can tell it still hasn't really sunk in. No, it hasn't. It'll probably hit you sometime around November. Yeah, it will. It, no, it's starting to sink in now. You get the, I, Mike Bentley came up to me today and he says, man, congratulations on the championship. He's like, I wasn't going to write it on Facebook like everyone else does. He's like, it meant a lot. He's like, I wanted to say it to you in person. And that kind of meant a lot to me. Is like, yeah, it, that was, that was fantastic. I mean, he's a champion. Uh, the people in the pit area coming up and shaking my hands, the fans, I did some uh, cool draws and I got fans messaging me and they're having fun with it and we're giving stuff away for free and they're having, I don't know, we're kind of, we're trying to get back to the fans and make sure they're part of the, part of the team, just like the crew guys and the family and everyone is. So yeah, thanks, thanks to the fans and uh, thanks to everyone, Salvo Speedway, uh, Sable Falls Tent and Trailer Park for uh, sponsoring that series. Uh, APC Auto Parts Centers for stepping up and uh, s supporting this 100%. And uh, there's a couple of aches and pains, I'm sure, but uh, they, we got a great bunch of guys. I mean, yourself and uh, Luke and Daryl, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for that. We're just getting started, my man. That's right. It's gonna it's gonna get bigger. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to hear you're back with the tour next year. I'm excited to see where the limited late model program goes next year. Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, you know we're gonna wrap this this playoff season up in a couple of weeks, and then maybe you and, you know, and the family should take a break for a little while and, and really enjoy what you've done because it's it's been a huge season. Congratulations on all your success, man. You've uh, you've worked your ass off for it. That's uh, that's there's no question about it. And. Yeah. Uh, you should be proud of what you've been able to accomplish. Yeah, I am. And uh, just when you think your racing season is going to be over uh, sooner, Brian Mack gets that little smile. And <clears throat> he goes, well, you know, for Oktoberfest is running uh, triple 50s. And it's so, good money. Mike Schmidt has put up yeah, some good money. Yeah, Mike has. Mike, Mike is Mike's, uh, one of those guys in this sport. Uh, unbelievable dude. He's really nice to talk to in the pits. And uh, the, the stuff that he does for us racers... Uh, I mean, you can't thank, he's the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. If you can't get along with Mike, then there's something wrong with it. You should be racing. Yeah. Just, don't even show up. So does so, that mean that we'll, we're going to see you for Oktoberfest? If everything comes out of Delaware all right, you will see us at for Oktoberfest. There you have it. That's big news. Yeah. Primetime Josh Sidey, thank you so much for the time, sir. Go to bed. you got to race tomorrow with yeah. the APC tour in, the, in their finale. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much for the time, and uh, well, I'm sure we'll check back in with you sometime in the next couple of days. Absolutely.